Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the USA post-match press conference with Coach Greg Berharter. Coach, congratulations Thank for you. championship. Thank you. Please, for questions, raise your hand or virtual hand and introduce yourself with your name and media. Remember, please, only one question per journalist. We are going to start, please. Greg, just your thoughts on um, uh, such a big game and, and uh, the struggles you overcame the other day, and then it seemed everything was everything was elevated um, today in the performance. Yeah, today's a final, um, and you could see the guys were super focused all throughout the day. Um, you know, to me, we knew what type of game it was going to be, and that was important. We wanted to maintain calm um, and 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 play our football. And, you know, credit to the guys because I think the intensity stayed at a really high level for, for the whole game. And that was really important, especially against um, Mexico. But all the other stuff, you know, it's our goal this whole tournament was to advance and then get a chance to play in the final and win the final. And we achieved it. Jeff Carlisle with ESPN. Greg, just what are your thoughts on, on Gio's performance tonight? And I'm curious, what compelled you to run down the touchline and celebrate with him? And then you guys kind of got pelted with debris. I'm curious, uh, you know, what you thought about that? Yeah, that was unfortunate. You know, because we, we want a really competitive game. We want a great atmosphere. And, but we just we don't want to get things thrown at us. You know, it's unsafe and um, someone can get hurt. But, um, you know, I think he had a great performance. Um, you know, 75 minutes. And, you know, he hasn't had that much game time in a while. And for him, it was it was just a mental thing. He was determined to grind through it and power through it. And I thought he was he was doing really well. And you see, he got to the point um, right where we we're going to take him out, where he, he actually did cramp up. And it was um, evident that he needed to come out. But I think all, all tournament long, um, more of the last two games, I think he did a great job. And, um, you know, certainly they made a great choice giving um, – player of the tournament or player this this round to Gio because I think he had a great impact in these two games. Doug McIntyre, Fox Sports. Greg, congrats on the win. Thanks, so. what, what went into the decision to start Tyler knowing you'd have to take him out at halftime? And, you know, how much did that goal at that moment change the match? It was an easy decision because if you think about it, what we did last time cost two subs, right? So uh, it, for us, we knew we can get to 45. We wouldn't use a window. Um, and we wouldn't use two subs. So, and then what it gave the guys is a boost that you got a guy like Tyra Adams on the field. And you can see how impactful he was in the 45. And, you know, typical Tyler, we get into an argument in the locker room and he wants to play more. And, you know, guys are asking, why can't he play more? You know, it's a whole thing. And, um, but we had to stick to it. You know, that's what we agreed with his club. And for, for us, as much as I wanted him in the game, because I did, you know, it's it's a safety thing. We want him to make sure that he gets back in a healthy way because he has a lot um, more games to play. The goal, I mean, the goal was amazing, right? And, you know, he was he was kind of joking around. Guys think he can't shoot, but I've seen him shoot before. And, and he's, you know, he has a um, hard shot. It generally, it has that trajectory where it rises. And, um, you know, just these balls you can actually hit really hard and are difficult for goalies. Uh, Paul Tenorio from The Athletic. Greg, you kind of laughed it off yesterday when you were asked if you guys had more pressure going into this game than Mexico. But I think yeah. the atmosphere certainly indicated that the expectation was for you guys to win. The team seemed to embrace that, not shrink away from it. What does it mean about the, the growth of this squad that they're willing to kind of hold on to those pressure moments and, and grasp them? And, and how big was it for you guys to have that level of pressure and, re and answer to it in this final ahead of the Copa America? Yeah, you know, I think it's something that, that we do respond to. And, um, you know, I, I think it's when the guys feel like we're pressured, then we come out and we play good, really good performances. And, you know, for me, it's, it's um, you know, really focusing on that type of performance every game. And that's what it's going to take to be successful at an event like the World Cup. And... Um, but I know the guys, you know, in the last World Cup, as soon as they got to camp, it was like focus, focus, focus. They were on it. And, and same thing in this camp as, as the, the, the camp went on. So I know the fo focus. For me, it's about, um, you know, really taking advantage of every single opportunity we have because before we know it, 2026 is going to be here. Um, Greg Paul Kennedy of Soccer America here. Yep. Um, you speak a little bit about Johnny Cardoso who came in for Tyler. Yep. Um, 
probably the biggest game he's played for you guys. Yep. And what did you think? You know, it was a really diff difficult circumstances to come in uh, um, because of the one nothing lead. You know, you're coming in at halftime where everyone else is, is you know, already in the rhythm of the game, and you're you're not. So, but you see how he just battles through stuff. It it wasn't a perfect performance. No one had a perfect performance, but he just keeps digging, and he's not afraid. And you know he's he gets in good position to win tackles, win balls, and um, you know really happy that he he got this opportunity. Henry Bush, now with the Sports right here, Greg. Um, two part question on on Geo. First of all, given yeah. you, you've spoken about a lot about his qualities the, throughout this week. Um, do you feel like he's become almost your most irreplaceable player at this point? Um, and second part, he spoke three days ago about how he's so far past everything that happened between you guys at the World Cup between your families, everything. When did you sense that he had fully moved past it? Um, you know, I think, I think when, when I took over the team, again, I talked about it needing time, right? And that was just something that we, we I think we both acknowledged. And the more you work together and the, and the more that, you know, he believed that intentions were true and that we, the whole staff has the, you know, his best interest um, in mind, I think we started to gain trust and, and we were very patient with it. You know, the, I, I've spoken so much about how, how much, how talented he is and how he can, um, you know, unlock defenses and he just has these qualities that are really good. Um, and I also believe, and I've said this before, that he can be a midfielder, you know, and I think that's, you know, the next evolution for him because he can control the tempo so well of a game and he can make final passes. And when he gets the ball in, in pockets in transition and he, he's a good finisher and he's a good final passer. So he's got a ton of qualities and, and we're really hoping that, you know, like many players we spoke about before, they use this as momentum to take back to their clubs and really kick on, you know, the second half of the or the rest of the season because, you know, we know what type of, um, you know, trouble they're in. And I think I really believe that he can help them. Uh, Greg Archbelt, CONCACAF.com. Uh, you being a big Dallas Cowboys fan, you know how difficult it is to three-peat. So how does it feel to to guide this team to uh, a three-peat here in CONCACAF? It feels great. That was our focus. You know, we, we talked about it in the beginning of the camp. I showed the Michael Jordan slide when he's holding up the um, – He's holding up the three fingers with the trophy, um, and that's what we wanted. Also, we, you know, we photoshopped the Nations League trophy into the same picture of Michael Jordan. So <laughs> that was what we were focused on. Um, you know, it doesn't happen too often. I think in North American sports in the last 50 years, pro sports has probably happened six times. So it's rare. And um, you know, congratulations to, to the to the guys. Congratulations for, for playing a great final. I think that that's the other thing that needs to be said is that we, we really performed well tonight. Um, and, you know, we're happy. Hey, Greg. Uh, Sanjay hey, from Sanjay. Backfield. Uh, Two-part question. First yep. part, you talked about Gio being a midfielder. Could you talk about how deep he played today and parts of the game on Thursday, too? Was that, were those your instructions? Was that his instincts, a bit of both? Could you talk about that? And then... Also, um, it seems like there's always going to be elite uh, youth prospects who are eligible to play for the Mexico or the United States. I'm um, living in the United States. Fidel Barajas, for example, last night has two assists in MLS. There's always going to be kids like that. What do you think is going through their minds when they see you guys consistently beat Mexico? You know, you could say dominate them. Do you think it's uh, motivating them to join the program or it's, you know, reminding everyone that it's that much tougher to be a part of this team now? Yeah, I, you know, I wouldn't get carried away with that type of stuff. I think it's it's part of the player, and we've always said this, you know, it's they have to feel it in their heart. They have to really want to be part of the group. They have to really want to fight for their country in um, in international competition. And, um, you know, for us, what, all we try to do is show them the environment, show them the group of guys. I, I spoke a lot about, you know, what a quality um, bunch of guys we have on our team, and you can see that. And, um, you know, so... For us, you know, we want to do our talking on the field um, with our play, but I think off the field is even a, a, a more special bond that the guys have created with each other. Yeah, you know, I won't get into to all the tactics because every time I do it, I get in trouble somehow from Jeff and Stephen and, and Doug and Paul. But it was it was um, an instruction. Here, <laughs> Mr. Quick, Oscar Fures from Tigo Sports Honduras. From outside of United States, we are looking for United States, all the growth that you have on those years. From 23 players, only two plays on MLS. 
And Mexican coach said right now that a lot of players need from Mexico go to Europe to have this evolution that you have. Do you think this is a clue for now be a, a U.S. A, a very good team in this area? Yeah, well, what I'd say is, you know, MLS developed probably three quarters of our team. You know, and, and there's a time, I think, you know, all you tell players is you play at the highest level you can play at where you're consistently getting game time. And when you start to dominate wherever you are, you move on. And that's wherever you are, and whether it's MLS or, you know, second division in Holland or first Bundesliga, or you, you want to keep progressing. You want to keep being challenged. And, um, you know, we ask all our players that. So, um, you know, MLS is extremely important to our program. And we have a really good group of uh, a generation of players right now. And, and one thing that we just need to be cautious about is um, that we keep developing them and we don't get too confident. Uh, we keep doing the work because we've done a lot of good work in the, in the last years to develop this group of players. But we need to continue because, um, you know, time, time evolves and, uh, you know, we need, we need to continue a continuous player pool. How are you doing, Greg? Fernando Fiore from Football Hey, TV. Fernando. How are you? Pretty yeah. good. Um, there is a word that you repeat over and over in the first part of the, this conference, and it's a word that I always have problem in my, in my English as a second language. Focus. Focus. Always yeah. being. Uh, how do you do it now after a boost tonight and then concentrate for the Copa America, which is a, you know, pretty close? And since he mentioned that two players in the MLS, one is Drake Callender. Uh, how do you see him over there? This yeah, you know, weekend? I think the the Copa America, we're going to see the guys focus because we realize what a big opportunity this is for us. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm confident that even though they had a long season in their legs, and I talked last, you know, press conference about, you know, sometimes we're, we're too hard on these guys because they, they do their best and they can't always play at the, the top levels. They're under so much pressure at their clubs and they're traveling across the country. You know, I think eight of our starters in the last game arrived on Monday night. You know, you're turning around, you're playing Thursday. Um, it's not the easiest thing. So, um, you know, I think that when Copa America comes around, we're going to have a good training camp. We know we play two very good friendlies. I mean, Colombia is on fire right now. Um, Brazil just had a big win. And then we go and battle through the group stage and hope to get to the knockout stage and, and um, you know, and compete for a ch championship. Great. Yeah, no, Drake... Um, you know, it was good to have him in this camp. We had him in January camp as well. And we've seen, you know, throughout the league that he's, he's been a, a good goalkeeper. And for us, um, you know, the most important thing in this camp was, um, was the collective, was the group. And, and Drake fits in really well. We are going to do the last question. Thank you. Um, Claudio Villalobos from Nashville Total Sports. Greg, besides the huge fact of winning the, the cup, for yep. sure, and having the U.S. do it for three times, um, can you tell with the short amount of time that you have the guys in this camp how much the team has improved the whole thing has improved since you took back the, the job well I think it's clear who we are I mean when you look at us you know it's clear the way we play we're high we're high intensity high pressing um, you know with the ball we've evolved a little we had a, a lot more control today at times in the game I think in, in the end of the game was we lost a little bit of control but um, we're dynamic, we're, we're fast, we can get behind teams. You know, I think if you watch our team, um, you know, th there's really things that you'd be concerned about if you're our, our opponent. And uh, I think that's a, the mark of a, a, a good group. Coach, thank you and congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You thank you, everyone. Have a good night. We conclude with this press conference.